Hi, greetings. It's me, Dr. Paul Gerhardt, and today I want to talk about public speaking and communication. So, uh, a brief outline of what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about the importance of public speaking in society, the communication process, meaning, perception, communication models, speaking with confidence, uh, recognizing that you're really not alone, and being able to understand how emotion and being able to control your speech all plays a big part in public speaking. Um, if you've seen me publicly, you probably know that, generally speaking, I'm not afraid to give uh, public presentations. I've been doing public presentations for over 20 years. As a matter of fact, uh, in one of my graduations, uh, I was the graduation speaker, and I got to speak in front of uh, probably around 10,000 people or even more. It was a big auditorium. And I did so uh, without any fear at all because I've done a lot of public speaking as a, as a student leader. And one of the things that I realized is the more that I spoke, the more that I really, really loved doing speaking. And so I've done a lot of public speaking engagements and I've made a lot of money in the process of doing so. And so that's what I want for anybody who watches my videos or who attends my classes, is I want them to have uh, a more comfort in delivering public speeches. Uh, there was a study uh, that was done in around 2012 where uh, 478 New York adults were surveyed and between 55 to 63 percent of them gave at least one speech in the last two years and to 10 or more people and 71 of those speakers gave at least four speeches. Uh, what they found was people are more likely to give job-related speeches of the informative and persuasive type. And people with more education and income give speeches more uh, frequently. So it really is important that you learn to uh, be able to share your ideas in uh, public presentations and, and do so in a way that effectively gets your messages across. Uh, one of the things that as a professor I find that uh, students can be deficient in speech. They have problems or challenges expressing ideas clearly, organizing messages, expressing ideas concisely, using evidence, using uh, a speaking voice, and controlling anxiety and listening effectively. So it really is important that uh, we, as we grow older and interact with other people, no matter your age, develop better critical thinking skills and be able to uh, effectively communicate that in the process. Uh, we need to make sure that information is processed to think about it and then that we're sharing it more effectively with others. The thinking process is understood by providing connections between ideas and interaction between how we speak and how we think is compelling uh, us to be able to learn and apply the lessons in an appropriate way. The better you are at making connections, the better you are at understanding the information uh, that's being provided. So, in the communication process, meaning truly is at the core of all communication. Communication is primarily concerned with meaning. Meaning really is kind of a social construct and we have to really understand that it, because it involves life experiences, perceptions of reality, and language habits. And we also need to understand that the communication process is both objective and subjective and this is why there are so many challenges in, in effective communication. Another way of looking at communication really should be done with recognizing that perception has a big effect on it. How we discern or assign meaning to our messages. We can accept or reject messages on the basis of personal constructs based on prior learning and experiences. And this is why sometimes people just absolutely don't agree with you because they have different perceptions about things. The sensation caused by the stimulation of a sense organ and the interpretation of that sensation affects one's ability to perceive a stimulus in a certain way and it is often the barrier to communication. 
In other words, sometimes we want have a tendency to hear what we want to hear. And so if we really believe the best of others or uh, want to believe something differently, we're probably going to be resistant to believing what we need to believe. So perception is very powerful. We need to consider completeness or the natural desire to fill in missing pieces of a message or pattern to make a whole idea picture or message. Uh, we have a phenomenal field or experiential field. The same person does not always perceive the same ob ob object exactly the same way every time. So we really need to be cognizant of the fact that when we're communicating with other people that they may have a different perception of the same things. Even the usage of the same words can have different meanings. So we need to look at communication models. A model is a, a representation of a thing or process, and we see a lot of these in academia. We need to be able to consider uh, verbal, verbal pictorial, and transactional models. Uh, the, there are different frameworks uh, within uh, the communication field where uh, they look at situations, they look at moods, they look at context, they look at psychological context. All of these things affect the way that we communicate and the way that our communication is perceived. The Ross transactional model is kind of an interesting one. It's a psychological model that takes a look at perception, it takes a look at uh, decoding, it takes a look at uh, so selecting and sorting. Uh, it takes a look at signs and symbols and language arrangement and voice action. Uh, it looks at feedback and sending and it really has to do with knowledge, past experiences, feelings, attitudes and emotions. And if you think about human nature, these don't always align because we all have had different experiences which makes us perceive things differently. And so in order to be able to influence others, we have to really find common language and common experiences that that help share a mutual communication. So in communication modules, we have to recognize that before we transmit a message, we encode it. That's putting signs and symbols that we believe are commonly thought of in language. Uh, the listener then decodes the signal to sort or select and elicit meanings uh, from one storehouse of knowledge, experience, and training. And so when we decode things, we're decoding these things from our own past experiences. And so that's very often where the challenges come in. So people with good intentions encode a message. Uh, based on their past experiences and put it into language and people do the same thing as they receive a message. So without shared a common experiences, uh, that's where the challenge comes in. Feedback is really important. What the receiver should be providing to the speaker uh, in order to let him or her know how the message is coming across to the audience so that the speaker can make the necessary adjustments. This happens in both positive and negative ways. There must be common experience for the communication to be effective and that's where the challenge is as, as public speakers is we need to be able to speak in a way using examples and language that helps get our message across. So um, building confidence as a speaker is one of the biggest challenges for each of us and it really is important to recognize just like anything else the more we do something the better at it that we can get. You have to really recognize first of all that anxiety really is the number one fear for Americans. Most people fear public speaking. Uh, 60 to 75 percent of beginning speech students really are bothered by nervousness. Uh, as a result, you can might find dryness of mouth, rapid heartbeat, a sinking feeling in the stomach, a difficulty with abdominal control, disfluency, being not being able to say things the right way, agitation, you know, speech courses can help you with these common problems and help you uh, be more 
um, effective and less apprehensive. So you really have to be able to understand emotion in order to truly be an effective speeder, speaker. William James's theory of emotion says that fear and anxiety comes from past experiences that fit a certain situation. Essentially, you need to recognize that in our brain we have endorphins of fight or flight. And so with this, if we're able to control those better through a better understanding of how to control our emotions, it helps us become more effective. So in speech, the emotional response comes from a false sense of danger. I have been teaching public speaking for a long time, and I have never seen anybody die in, in giving a presentation. And so we need to recognize that this is not a deadly thing if we can control our emotions. And so hopefully I'll give you some tips that you can understand that will help you in being able to deliver more effective speeds. So objectification is something that can help us control our speech. That's an intellectualization or pragmatic explanation of what is happening. So we really have to be reasonable in understanding what's happening. I'm just going up and having talking with other people. And so recognizing that speech really is about being having a conversation with other people and rather than they're there to evaluate and beat you up. That's the wrong perception. So having the perception of I'm an expert at something or I feel confident because I'm a smart, intelligent person that, that wants to make a positive difference, this kind of shifts the way that you feel about what it is that you're doing and hopefully it takes out some of the anxiety of your situation. So uh, we need to do something called cognitive restructuring. In other words, we need to act as if we're really not afraid of what's going on. You know, you've got to change the way that you're thinking. You know, your goals truly should be to expose errors in thoughts, replace irrational uh, thoughts with rational ones, be able to create uh, coping statements and practice coping statements and being able to direct our attention in a, in a way that helps us recognize that we're here to make a positive difference with our public speaking rather than uh, we're being evaluated for the purpose of uh, of making our lives harder. So um, how you frame things in your mind is called cognitive restructuring. And so you have to have a positive perspective of it. This really is going to make a difference. I'm going to work hard and, and practice developing an effective speech because I am smart and I, I do want to make a positive difference with my stakeholders. So you have to look at channel excess tension channeling your excess tension. So it really is to recognize that what you do before your speech can make a difference. So make sure that uh, you're doing some sort of pre-speech physical activity that can help reduce tension. Uh, one of my heroes is a guy named Tony Robbins and you've probably seen him somewhere. He's a great speaker. And one of the things that he does is he yells and screams before giving a presentation and he does affirmations and he's saying, I, I, he'll say something over and over again in a way that helps him recognize, I'm making a positive difference. People love to listen to me. And he does some kind of positive affirmation that usually rhymes. And he believes it and the louder he says it, the more it gets ingrained in his psyche and that helps him be able to effectively communicate his ideas. We need to look at something called systemic desensitization. And this is a process of reducing the sensitivity one has to the situation. Uh, it's about um, really being able to learn to relax. You know, maybe you have some techniques. Deep breathing. Uh, visualization. These things can really help you be more effective. Provide increased tension provoking situations while refocusing on relaxation and doing things that, rela that help you relax on cue. I know some people that like pinch this little piece of skin before their hands or grab a finger. You know, these kinds of things um, help you recenter. And so really visualizing yourself, taking deep breaths, um, 
practicing over and over again helps you uh, be able to uh, remember. There's really no substitution for rehearsal. And a lot of people think they can wing it, but it's even better if you don't wing it that you actually practice being effective because you really know what you're talking about. So doing things to help your memory uh, be able to arrange a speech and the materials in a way that uh, will help you remember uh, your presentations is really important. So use visual aids in an effective way to assist your memorization. That's what we do. We have we learn things through association. When I see this, I'm going to say this. And when, I, when these words are, are popping up on my screen, these are the things that I'm going to be talking about. And so I like to to say like maybe have a you're giving a speech about a dog and so you use a picture of a big dog and you you recognize that that big dog has these certain qualities but on your powerpoint slide you might have a thing that says characteristics of big dogs and have a picture of saint bernard or some kind of big dog and then talk about the qualities of that big dog so it, you really have to be able to know your stuff and then practice sharing what it is that you know. And the more that you practice, the more confident that you can be. So there really is no substitution for practice. We must really learn to control our speech fright. Visualizing yourself in front of other people, being confident, being well received, um, knowing what you're knowing really can help knowing what you you mean to convey really can help you be more effective so the uh, if the audience is not as attentive to uh, to particular parts of your speech and so you have to recognize that that's kind of human nature nobody is going to be glued on every part of your speech different things are going to appeal to different people uh, you have to be realistic in uh, how uh, the audience receives you. Um, are they being objective to your, your particular situation? If not, maybe you need to be a little more prepared. So we have the power to inspire people and keep people enrolled in what we're talking about. And so it really is in, uh, up to you to be prepared and to think of different ways that might keep people engaged in what you have to say. So be very critical about yourself and being able to evaluate your communication role completely. Um, I'm a firm believer of we create our own successes and failures and when people aren't receiving us the way that we intend that, that they receive us, maybe there are things that could be done differently so that communication can be shared. So I know this video is going on uh, a little bit long, so let me briefly see what we've talked about. Communication is largely concerned with meaning. Uh, there are some social construction theories that say that reality is dependent on a person's personal perception. It's about language, thinking habits, and communication abilities. A reality can be objective and an, uh, an individual's uh, perception and society's perception uh, may uh, sometimes not mesh and so we have to really be thinking about developing common um, connections with people using simple language and examples that uh, people can perceive in the similar way so perception really is powerful how meaning is assigned to objects and messages truly is key to giving an effective speech share excellent examples that make sense that have common meaning to the majority of your your stakeholders so communication essentially is a transactional process of skillfully sharing selecting and sorting ideas symbols and signs in such a way as to help listeners elicit their own ideas in their minds a meaning or construct similar to that which is intended by the speaker. You need to make sure that you are helping people fully understand your ideas as much as possible so that they can draw the same conclusions that you intend. So speakers have an ethical obligation to match their message to the audience with context and situations. We need to be aware of we truly can help control our own nervousness 
and tension. When we are nervous, other people will be nervous. It's probably going to be apparent. So uh, visualize yourself being successful and practice. There's no substitution for practice. To control your emotions, understand your bodily reactions to frightening situations, then reframe it in your mind. Use objectification, which is the intellectualization of what is you are experiencing, and act as if one is not afraid. Uh, prepare through cognitive restructuring. Visualize yourself being positive. Channel excess tension through systemic uh, desensitization, uh, and direct your actions meaningful in a meaningful way. So really being able to communicate your ideas. Take some preparation. Preparation in practicing, uh, giving a, a speech, being able to work out the details. I'm a big fan of, of practicing with a timer, recognizing that being succinct, but also being able to help uh, be able to communicate a message in a way using common models and symbols truly can help make a positive difference and you need to believe that you are making a positive difference in, in preparing your presentation in a way recognizing who your audience is and recognizing what it what kind of value that you truly have to bring all right I've given you a lot of information on uh, communication and public speaking I hope that you've taken something away of value here and thank you so much for your time I'm dr.